back in the mid 90s a rap beef started a bubble that escalated into an all-out verbal war between two artists who are considered by many to be the best rappers from their respective boroughs and went on to be considered two of the greatest rappers of all time it didn't just stop at music though this one got very personal too you've seen the title you know the drill this is the rap beef series i briefly mentioned this beef in the previous video where i talked about jay-z versus prodigy as they had happened around the same time and nas and prodigy were both dissed on the classic diss track takeover so if you haven't seen that video check it out after this like that one this also started with subliminals in the mid 90s this beef was a long time in the making and there's a lot of lines that can be considered shots back and forth but aren't direct if there's any missed feel free to toss them in the comment section below there's multiple claims to how the beef started and before i get into the tracks i'm going to be breaking down the potential reasons why it began in june 1996 jay-z dropped his debut studio album reasonable doubt on it was a track titled bring it on and on this track, alongside Jay-Z, are Jazzo and Sauce Money. But it was apparently supposed to have Nas and his friend and frequent collaborator, AZ, on the song instead, but they never showed up to record. Also, Nas was allegedly supposed to be on the song Can I Live from the album as well, but once again did not show up to record. Jay-Z not being able to get Nas on the album at all had a Nas line sampled from his song The World Is Yours for the song Dead Presidents 2, also on Reasonable Doubt. Some will say that this is what sparked the beef, Jay-Z feeling slighted or ignored by Nas. Others would have their own opinions on the start of the beef between the two. One example being Carmen Bryan, Nas' ex fiance and mother of his first child, Destiny. According to interviews as well as her tell-all book titled It's No Secret From Nas to Jay-Z, From Seduction to Scandal, A Hip-Hop Helen of Troy Tells All, she claims that the beef between the two started because of her relationship she had with Jay-Z, including getting pregnant by him. According to Carmen, she met Jay-Z shortly after Reasonable Doubt released in 1996, and it became romantic roughly a year later. On the flip side, another person very close to the situation claims that they were the start of the beef. That person being Memphis Bleak, who was a younger friend of Jay's and considered to be his protege for a time. Bleak claims that the beef started because he heard that Nas was dissing him on a song, so he dissed Nas back. Personally, I believe it started simply from Nas not showing up to record, and everything else just worsened it. Regardless though, the facts are that it happened. So let's get a bit further into a timeline of the beef, shall we? Since Nas never showed up to record, Jay had sampled his voice instead. This would only be the first time that he would sample Nas, however. The next year, in 1997, Jay released his second album, In My Lifetime, Volume 1. And on the track, Rap Game, Crack Game, he sampled a Nas line from the song Represent, also from Illmatic. Jay also mentioned Nas on the song Where I'm From with the line, I'm for when niggas pull your cards and argue all day about who's the best MC, Jay, Biggie, or Nas. Now it's not a diss really, but another example of Jay showing his admiration for Nas and also the competitiveness that he has. At the time of the album release, Biggie had been murdered months prior, so that conversation will be between Jay and Nas now as far as the who was the best. Also, luxury rides were a topic of conversation too at one point, as Jay-Z in multiple songs on Reasonable Doubt expressed his fondness of Lexus vehicles and also used them in multiple music videos. Nas then on his second album, It Was Written, released a week after Reasonable Doubt, has a line referencing Lexus as well, which was seen as a shot at Jay-Z. Years later, in an interview with Complex, Nas stated that the line was inspired by Jay, but not a diss towards him. Later on, in August of 1999, Memphis Bleak released his debut studio album, Coming of Age, which featured the song Memphis Bleak Is, which some would say was copying Nas's song, Nas Is Like, from his third album, I Am, which was released earlier that year. I can see the similarities in the title and the chorus, and along with the fact that they were released not too long after one another on top of the beef brewing between them, it makes sense to come to that conclusion. Also on the album is the track, What You Think Of That, which features a verse from Jay-Z, and Memphis Bleak on the chorus says, My whole team rocks rocks, we don't speak to cats, I'm a ball till I fall, what you think of that? A line that would be responded to a little later on by Nas. Also on the song, Bleak and Jay throughout their verses have lines that can be considered as subliminal shots at Nas. Around this time, multiple songs from Nas and Jay would have lines referencing themselves as the king of New York. For example, Nas's song, We Will Survive, from his I Am album, which had a verse dedicated to Biggie, during which he says, it used to be fun making records, just to see your response. But now competition is none since you're gone, and these niggas is wrong using your name in vain. And they claim to be New York's king? It ain't about that. Then on his fourth album, Nostradamus, released later that same year, he responded to Bleak's line from What You Think Of That with the lines, You want a ball till you fall? I can help you with that. You want beef? I can let a slug melt in your hat. 
Bleak then responded on the song, My Mind Right. On the first verse, he makes a clear reference to Nas with the lines, Your life's a lie, but here's the truth. You ain't hyped to die, but you hyped to shoot. You let the Henny talk for you, and so on and so forth. Hype here being a double entendre for Hype Williams, who directed multiple music videos of Nas's, as well as directed the film Belly, which was Nas's first film role. And the Hennessy reference is funny as years later, Nas would go on to be a brand ambassador for the drink. In the second verse, Bleak goes on to make a reference to Nas's second album, It Was Written, with the lines, Your lifestyle's written, so who are you supposed to be? Play your position. As well as ending the verse with a reference to Biggie, who had beef with Nas at one point as well. Also on his second album, the understanding, as well as the European version of Jay's Volume 3 album was the song Is That Yo Chick, which is seen by many as a subliminal diss to Nas as the song features Jay-Z and is all about a woman being unfaithful to her man. This being something that wound up being true considering the affair between Jay-Z and Carmen was likely going on at the time. Nas then responded back to Bleak and the rest of Rockefeller Records with his Stillmatic freestyle, specifically with the line, Rip the freeway, shoot through Memphis with money bags, stop in Philly, order cheesesteaks, and eat beans fast. Aimed at Memphis Bleak and state property artist Beanie Siegel and Freeway. That was followed by multiple lines aimed directly at Jay-Z, such as claiming that Jay is copying him, his rhymes about coke are fake, and his clothing line is whack. He also sends a shot at former friend and collaborator Cormega, who he was beefing with at the time as well. All of this led up to the Hot 97 Summer Jam, where Jay-Z put the Prodigy picture on the screen, and performed the first two verses of Takeover, dissing Prodigy, with the last line aimed at Nas. Then in September 2001, Jay-Z released his sixth album, Blueprint, and on it was the completed version of Takeover, Takeover the break's over, nigga. aimed at both Prodigy of Mob Deep and Nas. The third verse being 32 bars instead of 16 as verses typically go showed just how much Jay had to say about Nas. I will admit that this is a good diss track, and I like it, but some of the claims that Jay directs at Nas are inaccurate which in diss tracks happens sometimes as the public doesn't always know or care at the moment what's correct, but in hindsight, we often have a clearer picture. He attacks Nas's rap career by claiming that he was good at first, but has basically fallen off. Nasty Nas, the S goes trash, had a spark when you started, but now you just got Which is something at the time that was considered by many to be true, as Nas' first two albums were loved by many and considered classics, while his third and fourth albums were considered to be a big fall off in quality, and are considered still by many to be the worst in his discography. Some had questioned if he would ever be back to the standard he had set at the start of his career. Since then, Nas's subsequent albums have mostly been considered back to form, especially his most recent ones. Jay goes on to call him a fake thug and claim his rhymes are just things he witnessed but never lived himself, as well as mentioning the situation with sampling Nas's songs. And states that Nas didn't get paid from the sample. MC Search from Third Base did instead. MC Search, in an interview, would state that he only administers Nas's publishing, so he did get paid, but that he doesn't own it. Jay Z also goes at Nas with the infamous line, You said you've been in this 10, I've been in it 5. Smarten up, Nas. Four albums in 10 years, nigga? I can divide. This line is biased in favor of himself, understandably so but still incorrect since Nas' first song was indeed released in 1991, but his first album didn't drop until 1994, and Jay-Z has been featured on songs since 1986 with his then-mentor, Jazzo, and the group High Potent MCs. If you go by that, then it would be roughly 15 years and not 5. Lastly, he ended the verse off with what is probably the most truthful and hardest blow of the verse to Nas personally, hinting at the affair with Carmen Bryan, who, as I said earlier, is the mother to Nas's daughter of Destiny. Due to the diss being what it was, along with a decline in quality from Nas that was perceived from fans, you could assume that many had counted Nas down for the count at the time. This was not the case, however, as on his next album, Stillmatic, released in December of 2001, Nas came back on the song Ether, which is a vicious, verbal assault to Jay-Z and Rockefeller Records. From the intro, it's made quite clear about how Nas felt about Jay-Z at the time. It starts with the gunshot sound sample from Biggie's song, Who Shot Ya, to the F Jay Z sample Jay -Z. from Tupac's song, F Friends, which already is a good shot at Jay Z as considering the history between them. The chorus comes in with anger and a bold stance of claiming victory already, bravado that is backed up easily throughout the verses. Nas clearly states his claim as the better rapper and to be influential to the rappers following him, Jay Z being one of them as he sends a shot at Jay at the end of the verse with the lines, 
Name a rapper that I ain't influenced. I gave y'all chapters, but now I keep my eyes on the Judas. With Hawaiian Sophie fame, kept my name in his music. Pretty much all of Jay-Z's albums up to this point had some kind of Nas reference, whether it was a sample, a diss, or simply acknowledging his skills. In the second verse, Nas goes on to take aim at those who had his back and turn on him, continuing from the Judas line at the end of the first verse. And also, this is where the infamous Gay-Z and Cockafellow Records line comes in as well as comparing Jay-Z to a camel and calling him out for biting Biggie's lyrics and claiming that he's better than him after Biggie died. For the third verse, Nas makes his verse an extended one like Jay-Z did in TakeOver. He gets much more personal with Jay, going after his appearance again, and even getting parental with him with lines like, My child, I've watched you grow up to be famous, and now I smile like a proud dad watching his only son that made it. You seem to be only concerned with this in women, where you abuse as a child, scared to smile, they called you ugly. He goes on to continue to onslaught with lines dissing Dame Dash, a friend and business partner of Jay at the time in Rockefeller, by comparing them to Biggie and Puffy, and goes on to mention again how Jay steals Biggie's lines, as well as how Jay is a stand for always wanting to have work with Nas. Takeover and Ether are considered to be the biggest songs of the beef, and also considered two of the best all-time diss tracks in hip-hop, and I myself rank both highly as well, though my preference of the two is Ether slightly. It even became a verb in the culture for when someone gets dissed. It gets a bit of hate because of the beat compared to TakeOver, but I think that both of them are good. Once again, it's music, and that comes down to preference. Shortly after the release of Ether, Jay-Z responded with Super Ugly. The song has Jay-Z rapping over the Got Yourself a Gun beat, and then Dre's song Bad Intentions. And he goes in on Nas here with more lines about Nas being a fake thug and making up his rhymes about being a drug dealer, as well as a claim that Nas had to buy his chain back when he got robbed. In the third verse, Jay goes on to tell everyone what he alluded to back on verse 3 of TakeOver, which was that he had an affair with Carmen Bryan. And here is where the song gets to be mostly low blows, such as claiming that they had sex in Nas's car and left condoms in it as well. In your Jeep, left condoms on your baby seat. As mentioning that Allen Iverson has had sex with Carmen as well, which is something Carmen would confirm in her tell-all book. The disrespectful nature of the song even caused Jay-Z's mother, Gloria Carter, to make Jay-Z apologize on the radio for those lines in particular. According to an interview by Carmen, Super Ugly was corny and an emotional reaction to Ether, and the line about the condoms in the seat was untrue as her daughter wasn't even using a car seat at that age. She also states that AI confronted Jay-Z in a club for mentioning his name in the song as well. For the 2002 Summer Jam, Nas wanted to diss Jay-Z like Jay did the Prodigy and him in the previous Summer Jam. The radio station, however, denied Nas the chance to do so, which led him to go on their rival station 105.1 and diss Hot 97, as well as various members of Rockefeller and other artists. Later on in November 2002, Jay-Z dropped his seventh album, Blueprint 2, The Gift and the Curse, which the title track, Blueprint 2, is another diss to Nas this one being a bit more calculated than Super Ugly. He goes in on Nas for being fake, and also makes mention of how Nas doesn't give back to the community like he does, and that he's donated money after situations like Columbine happened to help the victims. Something that according to him, Nas hasn't done. He dedicates a decent portion of the second verse about the topic of charitable donations. Also, like he did on TakeOver, he makes this second verse much longer than the first. He goes on to call Nas a hypocrite with the lines, Is it Uchiwali or One Mike? Is it Black Girl Lost or Shorty OU for Ice? Overall, it's another good diss track and goes a bit under the radar compared to songs like Takeover or Ether. Following this, Nas released his sixth album, God's Son, in December 2002. On the song, Last Real Nigga Alive, Nas starts off by detailing the story between him and Biggie, and then goes on to do the same regarding the beef between him and Jay. He admits that, Kicking the door by Biggie was about him as well as confirming that Carmen did indeed have an affair with Jay-Z. He also states that his mother was sick while Jay-Z was dissing him, and that's why it took him a while to respond. He also makes claims of his victory over Jay-Z and Rockefeller, ending his birth with the lines, I was Scarface, Jay was Manolo, it hurt me when I had to kill him and his whole squad for Dolo. As I said with Blueprint 2, Nas also approaches this more calm and calculated. I don't consider this a diss track necessarily, as it's more so giving backstory on the issues rather than adding insults or anything to the situation. However, this is one of my favorite Nas songs ever. 
After this, the beef had settled down immensely until a few years later in 2005 when they appeared on stage together during a concert titled I Declare War, where Jay invited Nas on stage and they shook hands, officially ending the beef. Then on Nas's Hip Hop Is Dead album released in December 2006, they appeared on a song together for the first time as Jay-Z featured on the song Black Republican. After a decade, Jay-Z finally got to do a song together with Nas. Also in 2006, Nas signed the Def Jam, which at the time Jay-Z was the president. The next year, on Jay-Z's American Gangster album, they collaborated yet again on the song Success. Then on the Ludacris album, Theater of the Mind, released in November of 2008, they were both featured on the song I Do It For Hip Hop. Years later, on the DJ Khaled album, titled Khaled Khaled, released in April 2021, they were again featured on the same song with Beyonce titled Sorry Not Sorry. The beef would finally be over publicly, but in 2018 when Nas released his album Nazir, Jay-Z and Beyonce released their collaborative album Everything Is Loved that same week, which many online would say was intentional in order to take attention away from Nas's album release. This, however, is of course speculation from fans and not proven. However, if true, it would show that there's still some slight competition there if nothing else between the two. But this is hip-hop after all, of course. Both Jay-Z and Nas have had careers where they've made history in this genre and are respected by many as two of the greatest to ever do it. Their beef went on for years subliminally and then a few more years publicly and resulted in the two eventually working together, which is great to see, especially compared to some other beefs that wind up with violence or just never get squashed officially. Now that's it for this episode of the Rap Beef series. What's your favorite diss from this beef? Which artist is your favorite? What beef would you like me to cover next? Feel free to answer in the comment section below, and remember to click that like button and subscribe. And of course, I'll catch you guys next time.